hindsight is 2020. Like when you were there with Tom, like, did you have any, was there any tip off? Was there anything strange, no matter how small or, I mean, I know hindsight's 2020. Yeah. Well, in hindsight there, I can give you a whole trail, you know, it's kind of like being in a toxic relationship and you didn't know. And then afterwards you're like, oh my God, how'd I miss this? Or how'd I miss that? Um, I really got to give, um, you know, the, the credit really to my best friend, Cassie. She's the one who started um, picking up on things and started getting concerned. And then of course, we've been friends since we were three years old. So 51 years now. Um, and so, you know, at the time we've been friends like 40 something years. So you really talk things out like best friends do, you know, like four hours on the phone, analyzing every angle, you know, so sort of imagine if you're doing that with your best friend about a relationship, that's sort of what we did with Tom, you know, what's this, what does this mean? Um, so she started to see stuff, you know, fairly early on. So prior to my son's death in 2014, um, you know, we start to wonder, especially that summer before he died, we were really um, beginning to doubt things, but we were kind of gaslighting ourselves, if that makes sense, because it seemed crazy. Right. And it was Tom Girardi. It wasn't like, you know, some random lawyer with a shingle. I mean, it was like, you know, this brilliant lawyer. Right. You probably did. You have times right where you were gaslighting yourself or you thought like we're watching way too much reality TV, true crime, like we're losing our minds because this I is didn't a conspiracy. Watch TV. So so, it, it, so imagine that like I sort of live in this legal bubble where I'm all just I'm thinking I've done too many lawsuits, you know, and you're starting to think like, you, you know, you've looked at all these defendants and you've seen all these patterns and you're thinking I can't be seeing the same thing. And Tom, I mean, what's the irony of that? I'm working with him now at that point on the NFL brain injury case. And we're taking on the NFL, one of the most powerful marketing, you know, uh, companies in, in the world, really. Um, they're very successful, not only at football, but at how they market football. And we're going up against them. And so I'm thinking, wow, you know, I always call him a shark. You know, you don't want to bring a guppy to a shark fight. So if you're hiring a lawyer, you know, and you're going up against some big company, you want a shark versus a shark, you know? So I'm thinking, what? I, I said once to Kathy, like, ask me to take on anybody, but lawyers, oh, hell, I mean, we'll be killed. We'll end up missing, or at the very least, just two crazy old ladies, like 80 years old, you know, drinking our spiked um, tea on the porch, still talking about Tom Girardi and no one believes us. Right. So when you then, you know, finally, I know, you know, you finally filed your motion to replace him as your, you know, as your counsel in your son's case. And then the same day, Kathy, you know, with her son's case, like turned around and like sued him. Like, what's the mindset of that? Like, what got you to that? that like, was were you nervous? Yeah. So um, what led up to um, us, you know, uh, sort of freaking out and pulling the trigger was um, the fact that Tom was being sued by the legal and or you know the legal lending companies that had been loaning him these large amounts of money, and so if he's not able to pay them back, and he's claiming to have um, invested the Ragomez's money, um, where's their money? You know, that really started to feel scary. And it's like, you know, and what's going to happen to the people who actually have Jory Keese as uh, as their attorneys, their cases. Part of the value of a case is who's your lawyer? What yeah. law firm? So when you value a case, part of the way you value it, it's kind of like penny stocks, too. You know, it starts off worth really nothing. And then as it trucks along, it kind of goes up and down, you know, you never know. And anything could make the value of your case be worth nothing. So what would these cases be worth? Who would take them? Who would want to take cases from Tom before the law firm implodes? Nobody's going to want to go against him. We already knew this because I tried to get other lawyers to take my son's case because I was worried about what if Cassie was right? What yeah. if she wasn't crazy? And I didn't think she was per se either, you know, but what if she was truly right? Um, where would I be in the middle of my case? I wouldn't want to try to go somewhere else, but no one wanted to take it. 
You know, in fact, one guy literally said, I'll take it if Tom turns it down. So that's how I had to literally go have a meeting with Tom at the Jonathan Club. And, you know, to to follow up to your earlier question, was he really seen as a special of a guy? He had his own table, not at like, you know, uh, uh, you know, some random restaurant, the Jonathan Club, which is one of two of the most prestigious clubs in Los Angeles. And Ronald Reagan was a member there. Tom had his own table with a little reserve sign on it. When you go to meet with him, I mean, when you get there, people know who you are and that you're coming to see Tom. He would often let them know and they, you know, they would be all over it. So Tom was certainly seen in every place that he went as this larger than life sort of hero, hero, not just, oh, he did a lot of business or he was rich, but he was a hero, he helped people. And our darkest moments. Yeah. Now I've watched The Housewife and the Housewife. I'm familiar with the case, obviously, but just have you seen or has Kathy seen anything? Like, I mean, what is that? Like, have you gotten any money? Like, what's the status of all of that? So um the only the secured creditors have been paid in the bankruptcy so far. So right. a number of the legal lenders, which is um sort of shocking. Um, and then, um, the Ragomez's judgment, um, was approved recently as well. So, um, you know, we've seen some justice for Kathy's family, um, which is, uh, you know, I, I could probably never put it into words, uh, how much I wondered or worried or thought that maybe that her family, particularly her son, Joe would not get all of this money back, um, and every, he de he deserved to get every bit of his money back and then some and he's been such a gentleman really in the process um under such tremendous pressure you know so we're we're uh ecstatic that um you know they've got their uh, oxygen mask on as erica would say and now you know they can you know breathe a sigh of relief a little bit do you ever feel guilty, even though, you know, Tom had to prove himself and it really was like, but do you ever feel guilty just for the connection that it's your best friend? Yes. yes. Horribly. Yes. And not, and not just for the Ragomeses, for anybody that I ever said that Tom was amazing or, you know, all, I mean, I, I took hundreds of trips for Girardi Keys. I did dozens of presentations at legal conferences, medical conferences, in front of um, victims. I mean, uh, yeah, I have nightmares about it. Is there one thing, like you said, hindsight's twenty twenty. is there one thing that stands out now where you're like, oh man, what a red flag. And just something so egregious like that, looking back, you're like, how could I not have, you know, it was right in front of my face. I don't know. I don't think there was ever one, you know, big uh, 